No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. My Road Reel, the world's largest short film competition, is back. Shutterstock, your source for stunning HD and 4K footage, plus high-quality music. Hey, what's up? I'm Ryan with No Film School. We're here with Andy from AJA, and their Scion camera is here. It was here last year but there's something new, what's, what's going on with the camera? Yeah, so we've continually tried to offer our customer base and the customer base we want to attract more features and benefits from the camera. So we're very pleased to announce firmware version 1.3 at NAB 2016. And this firmware really is a, a nice step forward in terms of the image pipeline. So our customer base, our users, our dealers, uh, people who beta test for us had all given us great feedback during the process of them using the camera and we were able to take that and then make some adjustments to that pipeline. One of the critical pieces of um, uh, information we got from our base was the highlight handling could use some improvement, we could stand a bit more detail in those blacks. So we addressed that directly. So I'm pleased to say improved highlight handling, improved details in the blacks. Now those two things both would normally be expressed as dynamic range. We're not going to change the numbers that describe the dynamic range for the camera, but in terms of what that offers to the customer, it is a, a more pleasurable experience, it's a more manageable, manageable experience in less controlled conditions. Additionally, we're offering uh, a new rebate on Scion as well, so if you buy one uh, after the show or after April 18th, you're able to uh, return a voucher within the box that lets you get a pack 1000. So that's a one terabyte SSD media drive for Scion uh, with a $1,500 retail value. What are, what are the selling points of the Scion to somebody in terms of uh, you know, the overall camera market? Where do you see yourself fitting in? I think critically we fit a good price point at just under $5,000 in terms of the feature set. What, what's, what's the price point again? Uh, just under $5,000, so 49995. 49995. Um, in terms of where do we fit, we offer all standard um, connectivity on it. So everything is regular sized. So in terms of in, in adding any other infrastructure to the camera, we've got Ari Rosette, standard size SDIs. As we are now moving towards this whole world of HDR and HDR monitoring, you know, you've got people like Atomos, a bunch of other people here are producing these high dynamic range monitoring options. We have 12 bit outputs here over 3G SDIs if you want to do that. Um, you can then take advantage of really seeing the range within the camera using those kind of monitors. So we're addressing uh, the next level of need uh, from modern production. Also, the whole thing has a, a tremendous raw workflow, which doesn't necessarily rely on you using recorders. It leverages off some existing AJ architecture. So using Kona cards, simple Thunderbolt arrayed in a laptop and our Cam Exchange software, you can do raw up to 4K 30p direct with nothing fancy. And it's really a very easy setup in terms of an SSD. What are, what are the frame rates overall? So the frame rates overall, we run all the way through uh, 2398, 24, 25, 2997, 30. Uh, then we go to uh, 50, 5994, 60, and then we jump to uh, 120, and then 118. In the middle between. Are those crops or what's the codec on the high speed? They all run full, but when you get to 120, it's raw. So those are the three GSDIs out for Yeah, the output. That's correct. Not to the SSD. That's correct, yeah. It's just what kind of much. SSD is this? The SSDs that we're using here are off the shelf, but we buy the ones that mean that from empty to full, we can sustain the data rate. Since you and I last spoke though, we have announced uh, PackAdapt CFast. So this is a CFast adapter that sits in here. You can use your CFast media already uh, that you may have. SanDisk is the media that we've qualified. We don't stop you using any media. You can use what you like. And if it works for you, great. But SanDisk is definitely what we've qualified most recently. So trying to offer more flexibility. If you've got a second camera that's using that media, we can leverage off that as well. And remind me about the sensor, uh, global, what, is, what kind of sensor is it? What kind of dynamic range can someone expect? Yeah, so the camera itself, um, you know, at its very best, when you're in the cine mode, you're looking at around 12 stops of dynamic range. The uh, sensor size, its size itself is just slightly smaller than Super 35, and in terms of lens coverage, it covers any standard 35mm lens adequately. And is that uh, sensor upgradable or, or you've, you've got what you've got? No, when we designed the camera, that certainly wasn't part of it in terms of having that sensor. That doesn't, it wouldn't mean we wouldn't rule out um, perhaps a, a future upgrade at this time. That's not a confirmation of that or, you know, but we've been asked a lot of that this show and maybe it's something that we consider, but we certainly aren't making any sort of promises about that. So the global shutter is really, really nice, smooth, stable images. 
We include a, uh, a combined infrared and optical low pass filter. Now the IR cut is great, especially a lot of the tests that we do in Northern California. Great sunlight, I've never had a problem with weird color shifts ever, not once with this thing. It's super easy to go out, even in a test mode. This thing performs super well. The OLPF I particularly like because not only does it kill moiré pattern in it, it gives something of the flavor of the image. So there's a smoothness to skin tones and to gradients, um, which is enhanced by that OLPF. So it is 4K sharp, but not overly crisp. It still has a, an organic quality to it. Great, so those are the new features of the Scion in the firmware update, but we're also going to check out a couple of other things that you guys have at the booth here in terms of the overall AJ ecosystem. Let's check it out. Okay, so I personally, as an editor, have a, one of these little things right here, except it's a Thunderbolt to HDMI adapter. You guys have some new versions with new connectivity that editors at home and smaller editing shops might be interested in. What's, what's new? Yeah, so you're referring there to the TTAP, the Thunderbolt device that we created, so bus powered over the Thunderbolt interface. This continues that to UTAP, the U standing for USB 3. So we have UTAP HDMI and UTAP SDI, fairly self-explanatory, I think, as to what both of those do. So you plug it in and it will appear in your editing program as an output. So really straightforward in terms of its operation and its use. So we're using the integration of the UVC, UAC, OS drivers means it should just appear as an option, which also means that if you really, if you've got a nice camera, Scion, whatever you're using, and you want to use that as a web camera, you can integrate in, and it will appear in that functionality as well. So there are there are lots of nice options uh, with this particular unit. Yeah. If you have a 10-bit monitor or something, what's the SDI HDMI output like? 10-bit, uh, so 422. Great. And then I think there's one other thing we should talk about real quick. If a filmmaker is interested in streaming, what is what is the larger box here? Yes, I mean, this is very much, a, hopefully, a shape of things to come. So we're thrilled to announce Hilo. It's AJ's first standalone H.264 recorder and stream box, specifically designed for you to be able to, um, to stream out, but also record to an SD card and also push to the cloud simultaneously. The idea being that wherever you are, it's standalone. There's a record button on the front. Um, there's a stream button on the front, so you don't need to leverage off other architecture or other points of failure, it's a one box stop for that kind of usage. And it's, I hope, as I say, the shape of things to come for us. And what's the uh, pricing on these different uh, units? The pricing on Hilo, I believe, is uh, 1,300 bucks. And the, uh, these are $345 each. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome. Thank you.